the background, you know, like the building shapes, all the geometry and the architecture and stuff, onto uh, as well as my paneling. I create the paneling in a Corel Photo Paint, which is my main graphic software, because I'm too cheap to get Photoshop. <clears throat> So yeah, I mean you can tell uh, I have like these basic figures that I built uh, in SketchUp, you know, with just basic, you know, made out of basic geometrical shapes, and I just kind of position them where I want them to go. And when I transfer onto Lightbox, obviously I'm not tracing them or exactly like how I uh, like like those characters that you see there, you know, those just circles and squares. Um, I just do like a I draw a circle in blue pencil you know about where the head is so I can, and and then I draw a line from the head to about where the feet are gonna be so I can get an idea of you know the placement of the rest of the body and then I go from there and start you know as you see I Take it off the light box, put it on my drafting table, and start as you saw me start earlier. You can see I messed up, I uh, forgot to, um, on those little chemical pumps, I guess, that go into his body. I drew his, uh, his shoulder there before I drew that chemical pump on there, so his shoulder goes right through there, but I wasn't too concerned at the time because I knew I was going to just... Uh, fill that that little pump in with solid black but I do make mistakes like that you're gonna see me later on I will uh, have to break out my white acrylic which is what I use for white out to paint over some lines and I use that mainly because uh, the whiteouts that I've tried, they're just, I don't know, they're too diluted or it just takes too many layers to make it work the way I want it to. I don't, maybe I'm doing it, applying it incorrectly because I've seen Jim Lee do it and like he uses a whiteout pen. And it worked great for him, but you know, I just, I've had better luck with a, just a tube of basic acrylic paint, basic brand. Get them for like four bucks five or six I don't know inflation's been driving the price up uh, now you're finally getting to see what a jag looks like originally I was gonna have uh, another uh, Ithorian character who's also in the group but you don't see him on this page uh, his name is Hecklin but I decided to make it jag like at the last uh, minute like right when I started pen the penciling phase um, at the very beginning of this video Just because uh, Jag had been all over the second page, or no, I'm sorry, Hecklin. Hecklin had already been all, been all over the second page. I just spilled coffee all over myself. God damn it! It wasn't a, it wasn't hot. It was already nice and cool from sitting because I'm such a slow coffee drinker. More like a coffee sipper. It's room temperature at the moment. Which is fine. I'm, I'm not too. I don't have a problem when it's my coffee that gets room temperature. And I know where it's been the whole time. There's uh, another Terion soldier. He's part of Chalk Two. And the Chalk is the the name I use for the groups. The different groups. Instead of squads, they're called Chalks. C H A L K. I got that from uh, watching Black Hawk Down and uh, studying some of the other, uh, like other military memoirs, more recent ones. I'm still reading a, a book called Joker One by a, uh, I think it was a platoon leader. Uh, I have to double check. I'm pretty sure it was Lieutenant. Joker One was the name of his platoon.
Sorry for the dead air. After a while, I just start running out of things to say. But hopefully, uh, just watching me uh, tediously draw all these little lines and bits are is interesting enough for you to uh, not fall asleep. If it is uh, too boring, uh, please comment below and let me know. In fact, uh, let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see me make. I'd like to make more of these. I have ideas for the next thing I'm gonna, what video I'm gonna make. I don't know when the next time I'll be video making a video of me drawing another an entire page uh, of my graphic novel will be. Because I was a little bit uncomfortable doing it uh, this way, like having to, to deal with the camera being there at my left. And always having to, to be conscious of it, you know. I think I think it's part of the reason why I'm, this page didn't turn out as well as uh, the page before it. You know, at least not to my satisfaction. And who? There you have the leader of the platoon. That's Captain Silvatron. She's female, though they have the. Uh, they don't use different words like sir and madam or at least for that case I mean they definitely have different pronouns uh, amongst the Tarion amongst the Mechanites you know to the, they just use sir in their militaries so even uh, the even the female members the Tarion and the Mechanite armies are uh, referred to as sir at least those uh, those countries that allow women females in their uh, in their military the Athorians don't allow females the Athorians are actually pretty chauvinistic which uh, you, you see a little bit of that in this book. Whereas the Tarion, probably largely due to human influence, uh, because they are the uh, the uh, they are the Mechanite nation that is most closely aligned with the human nations. They uh, they keep their. Uh, the culture is sexually balanced, I guess you could say. Gender wise. Oh, the Mechanites, to my knowledge, have not developed any kind of a third gender the way human beings have. You know, there's no. You know, they just haven't. Just hasn't occurred to them. I think it's one of the one of the things that distinguishes like the big disadvantage that the mechanites have with human beings is that they don't um Oh crap, what's the word? They don't advance as fast. They don't innovate very quickly. Especially when they can uh, live for a very long time, they kind of have a. They do have the capacity to die. You know, they shut down or whatever permanently, and it's pretty close. About a hundred years, you know, about every hundred years, they they do end up. Sometimes they die, but they did develop the technology to where they can uh, get rebooted, so to speak. But often. Depending on how good the what the the technique is that they're using to reboot themselves or to get rebooted, is uh, they may or may not remember who they were, and it's almost like they're getting reborn. Or sometimes they might only just remember fragments of who they were. So it's kind of like a re reincarnation. They call it reprocessing. And it is natural for them. I shouldn't say it's like a technology. They use technology to improve on the natural process that they go through every hundred years or so. They shut down and uh, essentially reformat themselves. 
However, I mean, it's becoming more, it, it has become more and more common depending on how wealthy the individual mechanite is or how important they are in the govern in their respective governments that uh, all their uh, to where they just end up retaining their entire identity throughout every uh, reprocessing. Silvatron is a an exa good example. She's a few hundred years old. And so is Am Amjack himself is like at least three or four hundred years old. It's safe to say the vast majority of those characters, or these characters, are, I mean, because they are in the military, and military experience is valuable. And so uh, their identities, uh, a good effort is, is put into retaining their identities. Amjack has actually been lucky. He remembers his identity even before he uh, became a, a military soldier. Which is where a lot of the flashbacks come from uh, throughout this, this book. But you can check out uh, at inrodx.com. Uh, I've got, I put up a new installment every couple of months because that's about how long it takes me to get one done. Um, mainly because this isn't all I do. I don't just draw comics. As I said, I also made some music videos. I got a music project too that takes up some time. Um, and I get, uh, like a lot of people, I get distracted by the evils of Facebook. And, th and throughout the summer, I got heavily distracted by Buffy the Vampire Slayer. My girlfriend got me into that. You know, I, I liked the movie. I was a big fan of the movie back in the day. I thought it was hilarious. And, I wanted nothing to do with the TV show for a long time just because of I didn't like who they chose to be Buffy. And uh, I didn't have a lot of patience for the cheesy special effects like the werewolf. Every time I'd flip over to it and see what it looked like, there would be, uh, you know, who I later found out was Seth Green's character in his cheesy werewolf suit jumping around. Which, the way I like werewolves to be, um, well, it's nowhere near that. And I don't have a lot of patience for crappy werewolf looks. But I finally just started watching it out of boredom. And then after a while, I got to take the to it. And we watched all seasons. And as far as the series is concerned, I mean, he basically took... Or I should say all the um, – when I say he, uh, Joss Whedon, you know, he took all these, uh, you know, the fundamental comic book structure and applied it to a TV series, which is, you know, made it interesting to me as somebody who grew up reading comics. Yeah, yeah I see I uh, – I drew Uber's leg before I finished drawing uh, Vipneg's plasma cannon thingy. I'm going to have to come in and wipe out that part. And right now I'm drawing Vipneg's leg because I didn't quite get it finished. And I had to erase and properly place it. I didn't have it portioned out correctly. And I, start to real I started to realize that when I was getting time to ink it. I'm like, oh man, this is going to be crap. So, 